Hi, everyone. Hey, Alan. Hey, Martha. How are we all doing? Okay, Joshua. <laughs> So this was a fun week. I just got back from the great nationals. I know a lot of you might have been playing there. Anyone here who played? You can't see my screen share yet. Let me resume it. Owen, Wesley, Ananya, Alan, Krish. Oh, let's say, okay, nice. I know a lot of you played in there, yeah? Megan, I didn't, I went there, but didn't play. Oh, okay, interesting. So, Eric, which grade did you win? Seventh grade, very nice, very nice. I did follow a lot of games. I didn't, um, I don't know if I picked any of, so what I'm doing basically today is, uh, Owen's like, he beat me, okay? That's, uh, well, you can take the bench today and try to solve some positions better than him. Uh, I was there. Yes, I was there. I, I usually teach as part of a school in New York, collegiate. And we didn't have anyone in the higher grades. We probably had a bunch of kids, sixth grade and under. So we seventh, eighth and ninth, we had like maybe some few kids here and there, not much. Um, but yeah, I was there throughout the weekend, mostly inside the team room, analyzing games about pins, forks, and skewers. So, but of course, we got some really, really interesting games. Some of you probably already saw some of them. And if you played the tournament, I strongly suggest that you sit down and analyze these games because it was G90, longer time control. I was not anything that you blitzed out. And it's also a very important tournament where pressure mattered a lot, right? Um, Arvind, it was a great nationals. It was held in um, Maryland. And I like to keep track of tournaments where there was enough pressure. So this is experience you cannot buy anywhere. Just remember that, okay? Because when you study and train, you're mostly preparing for decisions under normal circumstances. But you don't really, all, you cannot train for a decision when you are, you know, making a decision, deciding between taking a draw or going for a win or taking a risk when it involves winning the national championship, right? So these tournaments definitely are worth analyzing. When I say analyzing, it doesn't mean just finding the best moves, writing comments about what we we're thinking. How did you make the decision, right? Why you made certain decisions, right? This, these are very, very important to document. So make sure you do that. So what I was thinking of doing today is that we'll do a bunch of positions from the nationals. I might have picked some of your games. So um, I don't remember exactly whose games I picked and I didn't. So you might find your own game, possible, but we will try to make some decisions along it, right? We'll, we'll range from easy to hard. So one thing I am going to do is I'm not going to tell you if it's a tactical move or not a tactical move, right? So you have to kind of make the decision. I might throw in a couple of positions with very simple positional decisions. Uh, you might not be winning anything, right? Uh, yes, yes. Let me send the link. This is in our board where you can actually play the moves and, um, you know, find the answer so or actually kind of make the move for an answer and we can see how that goes uh the password is one two three four five six guys you can put in your name I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Usually my classrooms have this super secret password. I don't even tell anyone. My students automatically know it. So from that perspective, I kind of forgot. Let's see which one we should start. With. Let's start with something like this. Simple stuff. Okay, uh, password is one, two, three, four, five, six, if you have not joined in. Now, there is some kind of lag sometimes, so don't feel too bad if you're not able to do it. Um, just type your answer in chat, private chat with me, okay? 
For now, I'm going to switch the chat only to host and co-host, so you'll be able to answer it to me. Maybe towards the end, I'll open it, okay? All right, I'm going to start with the first position. Not too challenging. Um, I'm going to give, let's say, three minutes. It's Black's turn to play. And what should Black play here? Of course, you can type in private chat with me. But I will also ask this question there. If you feel like a, more than one move wins, you can always type in a chat. I might have just picked one move and then I might tell you the first or the second option or something like that, okay? Um, all right. If you, I can't just confirm if moves right or wrong. If you just feel like there are two moves, ah, the move would have just popped up, yeah. Uh, if you feel like there is more than one move that you can play and both moves win, only then I want you to, Type in, type in uh, chat. I'm not going to tell you if it moves right or wrong. So we have a couple of minutes. Let's see. Now you see a variation. Like I said, I'm just going to wait a little bit. Okay, I was wondering who that was. Yep, I see that. Then you're perfect. All right, we have about one more minute left for those who are still thinking. Some of you are taking your time. That's very good. Yes, Alan, it does, but it doesn't make sense why. You would play that move, yeah? I also want to talk a little bit about time management. So once the last few seconds are done, we will talk about it. We're almost done with the time. That's right, Alan. I, I realized that you did it, right? But no, Vihan, we'll just, um, as long as you make the move there, you're fine. Some of them are just, Ask typing in just to follow up on that. That's all. All right. Let's talk about this very simple decision. Unfortunately, um, so white black was like an 1850, 1900 here. White was um, probably a little lower, maybe 1700, not, not too far behind. This game ended in a draw, believe it or not. For some reason, towards the end, this is, of course, later part of the game, and black just automatically assumed that, yes, this was this happened in the Nationals. Every game you're going to see today, or every position you're going to see today are positions that happened in the nationals. King C7 was played after check here. Here, actually, white has some has created some problems for black, and the game ended in a draw because now rook B6 I'll play check and you don't get the opportunity to trade anymore, right? Um, sometimes we have this mental block that you know if somebody captures this and then there's an outside pass pawn, I'm going to go in and grab everything. But here it's not, right? So rook takes, pawn takes, and now, of course, king c7 is possible, but for no reason you should play king c7, king c6, 
keeps a block on this and you should always do that when you can play that move. And this is where I see some of you made a mistake. So this is like a very, very simple um, choice, but I see this mistake and I'm definitely going to call it a mistake because you have to play the most optimal move. Now I see only one person played H4 here and got it wrong. So H4 is absolutely correct. You play H4 or G5, you're right. I gave G5 as the answer and this way I also gave you a small hint saying if you get to a point where you feel like you can play two moves, you can chat with me and I'll confirm, right? Ari, I don't know how much time Black had. Um, probably enough time. I don't think it was like one of those one minute or 30 seconds kind of situation. I think this is more about a mental block, right? You think that when you give your opponent an outside pass pawn, you're probably not going to be able to, you know, it doesn't seem to make logical sense. You don't want to go outside and bring back your king. But in this case, of course, it's doable. Now, you played king b6, guys. This didn't cost you in this position. You're still fine. Like, for example, if the king goes here, if you take the pawn, it will probably cost you. That's the reason why you should not play a move like this. Now, at least you should play something like this. And once you at least reach this position, you're winning. Right? So, the, the this setting is a winning setting already because I can never take the pawn. You will have h3. And you still have all your time to take the pawn and come back into the game. Right? But the idea of wasting this king b6 as a move is a problem. Now watch this. If somebody did this and also did this, then you will pay for your mistake. Right? And now you don't have a win. Like you play this, I'll take the pawn. You play this, I'll, ba I'll be back and draw. So this is where you have to be a little precise. No matter how much you think the position is easy or wherever you're reaching, it still has to be precise. Yeah? <coughs> If it happened to black, yeah, well, I mean, mistakes happen. I mean, all of the lessons come from these mistakes. It's okay. Everybody does this, even the top players. So that's okay. All right, let's move on to the next position. Uh, let's do this one. <laughs> so we have the next position on the board. It is black's turn to play. Obviously, of course, there's something um, straightforward to calculate. And then you just have to think about what happens after that. Oh, if king takes, oh, in that position, no. Um, I had a screen share. You should be able to see it now. And then I'm just passing the screen share now. I'm going to ask the question. In the meantime, start thinking about it. So let's say we'll do the same three minutes. By the way, I can add some time if I need, uh, if you need at some point. <laughs> so don't rush through the last few seconds. If you're still needing something, I might be able to add a little bit more time. Not the end of the world. I'll already start with four minutes. Okay. Uh, Simon, I think it does matter, yes. To some extent, yes. I think there is an efficiency in that. All right, I've asked a question. Don't rush through it, guys. You can always type it in chat. I won't give away an answer, but at the same time, I can see how you're calculating. Yeah, I gave four minutes. So, Alan, you'll have to figure it out, yeah? First of all, to start with, there are two candidate moves that you should immediately calculate. Can all of you type that in chat? What are the two candidate moves that you have to look at it? Beyond not those, Hari, I think those are also possible, but there's there are a couple of moves even more. Yeah, Joshua, Eric. Owen, Kelsey, yeah. Angela, I'm not so sure the second move. The first move, you should definitely look at it, but I don't think it's the main move. But the second move is definitely not a candidate move, Angela. Chris is like, I already got this.
Uh, those moves are possible. Ari, the point is, if somebody is giving up material first, you have to calculate that obvious move. Right? Don't shy away, shy away from this very straightforward calculation. There is a possibility that you might just win material right now with a move, but it might also be a completely losing move. So that's the first move you have to calculate. Yes, I see some of you have already started um, giving the answers. So Wesley, you have to decide, yeah? I think that's where I'm saying there's a small nuance. If taking on E5 works, according to your calculation, you still have to decide which knight should do that. And if somebody already got your answer right, if you if you can type in chat why you did what you did. So Sam, I'm not so sure in that position you have to play the best move if you got there, right? You don't have too much, too many options there. Well, Eric, um, okay, let me rephrase the question. Now the timer is done. I see some of you have gotten it right and some of you haven't. By the way, if you have multiple answers right and doesn't show your name in the leaderboard, don't worry about it. I'm still seeing it. So the main question is, of course, I can take on E5. I can take with Knight CE5 or Knight GE5. And both of those moves, of course, um, allows me to play Queen D1. My first question is this, right? Okay, let's even forget the fact about which knight can take. Um, how many of you spot a 96? It is absolutely must, and I'm hoping everyone in this class have done it. I expect you to do it. And if you didn't, you can be honest about it. But I'm hoping that every single one of you played 95, knight takes e5, and then spot a 96, because that's the only main move you have to calculate. Okay, very good. As long as you calculate it, you're, you're fine, right? And, and only you know, this is something that all of the chess players have to learn. You have to be intellectually honest about what you're doing. Only then you can fix some of the problems. I know sometimes it's feel bad. I mean, it feels bad to say, oh, I didn't see this move. It's too easy. But the ones that are most critical about themselves are the ones that improve the fastest, right? So, Arvind, you thought about some other move and then you have to, so spotted a few seconds into it. Fair enough, fair enough. So, let's watch this. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. And then knight e6 is the move that you have to calculate, but it's not too hard to spot queen d3 here, right? Queen d3 is pretty strong. Once you see knight e6 as a move and start calculating, you will actually spot queen d3. It won't be that difficult. Queen d3, now, the thing is, if I take, there is checkmate, and I'm almost forcing the queen trade because the knight on e6 is hanging. And once you see this, again, it's very easy to spot that you're just picking up a pawn, maybe even two, right? So... It's impossible for white to save that. I can go knight c7 or knight f4. Either way, you just already pick up a pawn and you're in a winning end game. Simple calculation. Now, the only thing I don't like about knight c e5, now a lot of you are asking about this, right? I just think the knight on f4 is not doing good in this position. You're just giving me an option to trade that out. Right? Either knight g6 or maybe knight f3 doesn't really matter. Still a winning end game. I mean, um, According to the computer evaluation, this is still minus over plus. The other one is minus plus separate, separate. So by definition, this is a this is a clearly better endgame that is a winning endgame. 
It still works. Yeah, black, I mean, black is still up upon now. That's not a not a question. So only difference, which I think is, which does matter, right, is this knight. I think if you do this, the knight is not actually doing much, right? There is a problem. The knight on f4 is a problem. After this, even if, let's say, I don't take on e6, right, white wants to make a draw down a pawn, you can quickly notice this knight's not doing much. The only way I can any do anything is if I have a mating attack, but I don't. I can still play queen d3, and then I'm walking into an endgame, which is super comfortable, right? So you should pick a better move. Even if you see multiple options, pick the best. All right, let's go to the next one. Again, if you get to a point, I have to ask some questions which um, might have multiple answers, but uh, I can only give one solution in this. So if you feel like there's more than one, type in both and explain how they are similar, then I can tell you. If there is no difference, I can give you just the idea of which one it is, right? But if there is a difference, like this one, a lot of you are asking, does it matter if I take on e5 this way or that way? It does. Okay, here comes the next position. It is Black's turn to play. And how should Black proceed? I will do the four minutes, I think. Um, yeah, three was less. Let's do four. Again, type in chat. If you have some options, don't rush through your moves. I see a lot of you are just making moves really quickly. Do your calculation. I can even add more time. Don't have any variations per se. Nice, Eric. Um, Ali, I'm not so sure which one transposes to what. Oh, you already given me an answer. Let's see. Um, how does it transpose to the same position? Can you explain in your chat? Why does it work, Vihan? You you'll have to explain why something works, not ask me why it doesn't work. Let's see, Joshua. Joshua, yes. That's why I said if you had that, I would answer that if you asked me as a question. <laughs> Your answer is right, but I can only give one solution. That's why I didn't. Mihan, I don't understand. It's, it's a free pawn. Why can't I just take it?
Uh, Muradhan, yes, that's possible. What if I take it? You have to give me a variation. Oh, so Vihan, that's your plan. Yes, that's definitely possible. Yes. But it takes you to a completely different position more than this. Yeah. So let's see. So this one stumped a lot of you. Looks like only a handful of you have gotten this. Most of you went with a different idea. So I was watching this game live and I felt this is a very, very, very good example of initiative. We have talked about initiative in our classes here before, and I'm sure you've all learned about initiative. So black has some really good pieces. I have some awesome pieces here. My queen is doing well. I have good space with my pawn on e5. And uh, even my rooks, a rook on e8 is doing good. Maybe this is the only rook that's not yet developed or not doing much, but most black pieces are very active. But most importantly, the king looks very dangerous. I mean, like with all these pieces kind of dancing around the king, it looks very bad, right? Seen the correct move in the sequence, but I still didn't get why it's correct. Okay, we'll talk about it, um, Aryan. Let's see what you misevaluated, and then we'll talk about it, right? So, for example, I let's start with some moves. Some of you played knight h3 check, okay? So I'm sure you're expecting king h1. So what are we doing after this move? What did you um, have in mind? Those who play knight h3 check, what's the next move? Do we have a follow-up? I don't see anything in chat yet. Maybe e4 now. Okay, it is possible. But if I take now, what is the idea now? So let's say take. Because now bishop f3 doesn't seem to work. Rook takes f3 is hitting the queen. Knight e4 it doesn't happen. So if you don't have a follow-up as soon as I play king h1, then that means you have to work on your calculation, right? That means those who played knight h3, um, what you have basically thought about is you expected me to play gh3. That is a pure calculation error. You cannot just get excited about your move and play it. If knight h3, I won't take. If you Okay, this is clearly better for black, right? Why would I do that? I would play king h1. If you don't have a move, that's bad, right? Now, let's see. What other moves do I see? I see, um, okay, if you played rook e8, either rook f8 or rook a8, you kind of played what happened in the game. Black actually played rook a8 in this game. And this was, I believe, black was like a 2000, fifth grade game. Um, I don't know if anyone here played in the fifth grade. Black was at some around 2000 and played rook a8, which looks extremely reasonable, right? So, Andrew, yeah, you might have maybe seen this game from close. Rook a8 looked like a very reasonable thing. But what happened is after knight d2, white simply played something like king h1 and rook a1, and black's position fell apart. And it's so interesting. The position that looks amazing, guess what? He couldn't defend e5 on. As simple as that. Because f6 is not happening because the king is in on g8. How will I defend the e5 pawn? So he tried something like rook e7, rook e8. But by then, um, the pressure here was too much. And some d4 kind of tactic at some point happened. And white was clearly winning. The game eventually ended in a draw. But this position, this moment is the point where black is clearly better, but only better because black's initiative depends on very specific moves. If you don't call the shots now, your advantage is going to vanish. So the answer can either be for our bishop f3. I think this is the simplest form. There are other moves that we can play. We'll talk about it in just a second, right? Now, the most Obvious in the simple move, um, like I said, this is idea to play e4 to play knight e5. So from that perspective, bishop takes f3, rook takes f3, and e4. And if you played e4 directly, that's correct. So like I told you, I can only give one solution as a right answer. Uh, now again, I'm pretty much have to take. If not taking, probably still. I mean, I don't know if I play rook e3, probably take a knight e5. Still or knight e5 directly. Yeah, I think multiple options. What do you guys think? Should I play knight e5 directly? 
or taking an ID5. Either way, I like it, right? You cannot play B5 because there's no target on C4. Not necessarily, Vihan. B5 is also a good move. I think Muradhan also asked about that move. We'll come to that. Oh, knight B4, some of you are mentioning. That's true. Yeah, I completely missed that. Uh, in fact, if I'm going to play knight B4, I'll take this, of course. Takes, takes, and I can just simply take a free pawn. Yeah, why not? So black should be winning. So after E4, pawn takes E4, knight E5. You don't really need to calculate much. Clearly better, right? How do we make these decisions at the right point? This is, again, a sense of intuition and sense of, um, in some sense, you, you understand the critical points, right? While you're playing this game, somewhere you have to feel that you're at a critical point where you have to strike. You don't play two more moves and then realize, wait, can I do something? Right here, you realize, okay, white is going to play knight d2 on rook e1. How do I react to that? Do I have anything forcing? If you start calculating now, you'll realize, wait, I cannot let that happen. That is simply too much pressure on the e5 pawn and i need to create some play right now before that happens and that's then you will easily get the answer if you know that black can find something right now you will actually find it pretty much all of you can even though in this particular uh, example we missed a few uh, but in general if you if you're aware that something is critical and it's there then it's easier to find if nobody's there to tell you that there's something critical you cannot right now b5 is actually very interesting yeah it works I think knight d5 uh, is also possible, but um, this is some crazy line with where the bishop is here um, with knight takes b4, I think works. I couldn't even understand that part, but um, I think if you are playing b5 for knight d5, that's a different story, but there's another, like I said, a crazy variation. Knight takes, pawn takes, and you go, um, yeah, you go e4 here. So the difference, believe it or not, is the bishop being on b5, is that yeah, Angela, I'm just explaining why not, right? Playing b4, b5 and knight b4 makes a difference. Why? Because white will play rook f4. Rook and if you play queen a1, I'll take this, right? But here I have bishop f3, g f3, and then I have queen a1. And when you take, I finally have this move. So that's why you should play b5 to kind of interpose and keep the bishop on b5. And after bishop b5, you can play knight b4. I don't know about knight d5 after bishop takes b5. You can check, we should check that also. But okay, let's move on to the next one. I have the next position. Let's see. So this one, I'm not going to ask a question right away. Why don't we do what we normally do? That is, look at the position, pick up some factors. What are the major factors? What is going on in this position? Let's type that in before anything else. Knight versus bishop, yes. Isolated d pawn and castle king. IQP. Open position. White has a lead in development. C file belongs to white's rook, misplaced black pieces. Two knight versus bishop and knight. A2 is hanging. White has less space, but black has IQP. D5 is a weak pawn. Very good, very good. I think, good. So um, I have explained one thing to my students in general. I'll again do this. If you've been to one of my sessions before, you know that I always like to talk about these factors before I start calculating. In an actual game, this happens in a few seconds in your head, right? I'm not sitting around trying to do factors in my game when I'm sitting and thinking about moves. It just automatically happens, right? You're kind of paying attention to what's so more important. Very quickly, something will pop up in your head to say, wait, the pawn is important, it's weak. Or, oh, the file is open. Or the king is uncastled. Or the bishop against the knight. 
or the A2 is hanging. So there are so many factors that's calling for your attention. Something will kind of take lead at some point in your head to say, this is what I think is important, even though you're not consciously doing it. And your moves will work around it. When I talk to you in class, I'm only trying to make that process clear so you practice it enough that when you go to a game, you're doing it quickly. So just the, the clarification I want to do is you're not sitting around doing these factors for like three minutes or five minutes in a game, right? It's just a habit that I want you to build that you will never look at a move before you understand the position. So, okay, we have so many factors calling for our attention. Now I'm going to ask a question on what the best move in the position is. Each one of you will probably make a move depending on what factor you have picked, right? And so that's why it's important that you have picked the right factor. Let's see what we do with that. I will give, let's say, um, the same four minutes actually. All right. Okay. Oh, I think some of you have answered some questions. Okay, let me check that. I didn't realize you already made a move. If only if we can find. Yes, that's the, the move some of you are asking me. Yes, it's playable. It's not bad, obviously. It's, I wouldn't call it entirely bad. Again, we are. That's a playable move. And that was actually played in the game. Yes, Joshua, that was played in the game. Uh, it's okay, but not the best. All right, we have the last minute and a half. Eric is acing this. I like it. All right, Kelsey. Nice. CL. Follow-up. Hmm, why would we play that follow-up? Actually, it's not a bad move. Hmm? I didn't even think about that move. Some of you guys are playing as a follow-up. Let's see. I think that most possible, but um, probably just leads to equality, not not much. But those who played a different follow up and you got it wrong, we'll talk about it again in a second.
And again, some of you, if you get it wrong, don't worry too much about it because like I've clearly explained, you might actually be getting some good moves, um, but I cannot give multiple answers. So for that, that could be a reason. The second thing is you might be playing the second best move or third best move, which is not essentially bad. <laughs> there are some moves that are just bad. I will explain or talk about that. The rest of it, you might still be okay. All right, time is up. So most of you played E4. Yeah, there is nothing clearly wrong with E4, right? I think those who played E4, you're basically trying to open up the position, which makes a lot of sense. The only thing is I can actually give up the pawn and castle and win it back. I think I don't know how many of you considered that as a possibility. If you play E4, anything else, I agree. Your idea is very, very good. If I play D4, you will get knight C4. Uh, if I take, you will take knight takes E4. Um, all of that looks very nice. The only thing I could um, do, I don't know if any of you saw this, is I can actually castle and just play something like root D8. And this is, or don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about getting right or wrong. These are, for example, this position is more about assessment. Now, I'll be honest with you, I have analyzed some of these games already with an engine, so I don't know exactly how I would, how I would look at it if you had given me the same position without the engine, right? Um, so it can be very difficult to evaluate this. I might evaluate this as being an extra pawn, but okay, in this position, you can kind of see the problems with this pawn. There is a lot of pressure, and then some of you pointed out A2 is also a weak pawn. So I kind of reversed the thing. I'm not playing defensively anymore. I've just gone into an offensive position from um, from the earlier point. I just decided castling is more important. And I, I think the game is maybe teeny tiny advantage for white. Nothing more than that. So yeah, I think most of you played e4 as, a, um, as your move. So I don't think that's wrong. Let's see if there's any other move I got. It's not the best move though, that's obvious. Right? It's not definitely, definitely not the best move. You can do better than that. Okay, I saw knight h4. I don't think that is a move I like so much. You liked e4 too much, so you didn't even look at any other move. By the way, if you didn't look at b4 as a candidate move, it's just wrong. If you saw b4 and e4 and you picked e4, it's a different story. Right? If you did not see this move, that means you did not realize that the king being in the center and playing a little aggressively is more important. That means your factors or you didn't understand the position properly, right? It's another story if you saw both the moves and you somehow played e4 because you misevaluated this because you didn't see that white black will simply castle, play rook d8 and try to come back at the pawn or you thought that's actually just up a pawn and winning. That's okay. That's an okay kind of mistake. Now, keep in mind, we're all making these mistakes in our calculation and evaluation. Some of them are okay. Some of them you have to fix immediately, right? If you did not see b4, red, red flag, you got you to fix that. If you saw both and you missed this and you didn't evaluate, that's okay. We'll still work on it to get better, right? So, okay, some of you played knight b3 here. So I think maybe the best response, I'm not so sure. Let's say I go bishop d6. Yeah, Alan, I saw you played this. I think, I mean, rook b1 is not winning. I think rook b1 is an obvious move. I feel it's so much better. Let's say I go bishop d6. You play queen d5 and let's say play knight f6. I'm not so sure about the evaluation, yeah? What are we doing here? What do you guys think about this position? I can go queen f5 and black castles. Yeah, do you see the point? Your move looks nice. Even now, maybe white is teeny tiny bit better because your queen is better placed. But I think this would definitely end in a draw eventually, yes. I think black should be able to hold this. And that's, again, the beauty of initiative, right? If my advantage revolves around the fact that the king is in the center, that advantage, that initiative is going to stay for one move. And one imprecise move allows me to just equalize. If bishop takes knight b3, I think it's very strong. Because now you're going to take queen d5, keep an eye on this one, keep an eye on that one. Black cannot still easily castle. And if queen b5, there could be a4 ideas, there could be knight d4, knight f5 ideas. So this is much better. If queen takes b4, of course, there's rook b1, followed by 
Rooked XP7. And again, it's still black can still castle. I don't think black, you can stop black from castling. But here, this is already a big bonus, right? Your rook on the seventh rank. Maybe even trading to an end game now with the rook on the seventh rank, you will probably get this next rook, maybe. Um, so your advantage is higher. So it's still not like a winning advantage. Yeah, knight b3 is possible. But knight b3, maybe I'll castle. If you play knight b3, I, I might just castle Alan. Actually, this is still a different kind of exercise to play from here, right? You can sense that you have a better position and advantage. Can you actually convert? That's a different, complete different line of um, thing you need to work on, yeah? All right, let's go to the next one. Okay. I don't know if we'll be able to do one more after this. This might be the last one. It is White's turn to play. So very quickly, you guys can type about what you think about the position before we do anything else. Let's see if I can do one more. Yes, uh, Maradha, obviously that's the main thing. Um, but let's talk about some of the factors. Bishop pair, good. White's got the open file. White is generally better here. Um, if it's blitz, Krish says he would play a move already. Fair enough. I think most of us would play a move if it's blitz already. And that's the move you should be calculating, definitely. Um, the B2 pawn is hanging, Angela, that's right. And th those who are talking about um, the immediate move that comes to our mind is, of course, rook to the seventh rank. Seems like a reasonable move. So let me ask the question now. So bishop pair, open file, more space, B2 is hanging, um, and the rook controlling the open file is what we've got so far. Okay. Someone's happy. <laughs> so the main question is, how would you... Um, I mean, even if you have some very obvious ideas, the execution is still important, yeah? And this one, I think, is even more fun because this literally was a championship decider. Arvind, too quick, too quick to play the move. Even if you have an idea, there's no rush. After I told you this could be a championship decider, Oh, Eric, you could have finished with the perfect score.
All right, last few seconds, pretty much wrapping it up. Again, there are multiple good moves in this position. White is already better, so keep that in mind. Your move might be a second best or a third best move, so it doesn't matter. Um, just listen to my explanation to see if your move is still good. So if your move is still good, don't bother about getting it right or wrong. Okay, so time is up. So let's see. I see some of you got it directly right. Let's see what are the moves. I see most of you who did not play rook c7 probably picked b4. B4 was basically the other option that I saw. But I don't like B4 directly, guys. I think the thing is, you're immediately giving me a chance to figure something out. And Ari, we'll come to that, right? Some mistakes will cost you more. Like, for example, B4 directly, I think is going to cost you more. It's really going to cost you the advantage, literally. Uh, for example, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. I will ask another question here. Let's say just 60 seconds. If you're black here, what will you play here? Let's see if you can figure out how black can exploit the fact that white played a little bit slow, tad bit slow. I've asked another question. Uh, it pops up a little bit. I think it'll, it'll come in. If it doesn't, yeah. You can still look at the screen and look for an answer. Whenever it pops up, you immediately make a move. Um, rook c7, when Alexander? At which point are you talking about rook c7? Uh, you're thinking about that at a different point, or maybe even after the answer given, you're probably thinking about that move. Yeah, so all right, let's um see. I think oh, the timer is pretty much done, and I see those who got it wrong played rook a3 or rook a2. What else did we play? Yeah, mostly rook a3 or rook a2 seems to be the kind of move that has been played here. Black has this nice opportunity to immediately create problems on the e4 pawn. Again, it's one move. Again, nice to see these examples where if you just make one mistake in a game, your win will become a draw. So White went on to win this game with that tied for first for the Nationals. So f5, now I don't think you can easily deal with this because if I take, you might have to take with a piece if you go like this, yeah? That already look, I mean, it look, just looks bad. If you play rook c7, now I go just knight f6 and I you have to trade off something. You can take on e7, I'll take on... You just completely change the nature of the game. d5 is hanging. I mean, I have to watch out for d5 because bishop c4 could be dangerous, but generally uh, the nature is... Stay. I don't remember which grade it was. It was Rohan against Marvin. Uh, I don't remember which grade they were They were in. Ninth grade, yeah. Okay, ninth grade, that's right. Uh, but again, I thought this is a very human move to play. Rook c7, right? Very natural. After knight c5, now a lot of you played rook takes e7. Here's the problem. It's actually a good move, but it's not an easy move or a practical move in my opinion. Right? If you play rook takes e7, you should have first spotted that bishop f6 traps your rook. I mean, if you saw that. If you played rook e7, rook c7, rook takes e7, did you see that bishop f6 traps your rook? Or did you think they'll just take your pawn? If you didn't, already something that you have to worry about. If you saw that and didn't play, your unfortunately, the assessment is wrong. Bishop f6 is actually right. And after rook c7, bishop here, rook takes c5, pawn takes c5, and apparently white's winning. Now, I wouldn't be so sure about it in a game. Computer says white is completely winning. If I was in a game, I would definitely prefer white. I definitely like white. But the kind of evaluation that I'm seeing, I might not be that sure about the position. Because you see the connected pass pawns are going to be very dangerous. Two bishops, very strong. I can understand all of that, right? 
Correct. Practical play is what I like about here, right? So rook c7, knight c5, white played very simple, rook b1. The most easiest way to finish the game off. Because b4 is coming now. If you play a takes b3, a takes b3, and then I play b4. Black is absolutely lost. No counterplay. Much easier, right? Since the knight is already on c5, I cannot go to f6 to try to put any pressure on d5. f5 can be even met with just take. And then b4. f5 takes and then b4. So after rook b1, I believe maybe f5 was the move. I don't remember exactly, but something happened. And then b4 takes, takes happened. Rook a2 and some white anyways played b4 and went on to win the game very comfortably. So, anyways, I think this is a good place for a wrap up. And also remember that this, whenever any big tournaments happen, you can look through some of the games. All of these games, some of the top games at least, are available in leeches. You can just download them, go through them, and see how, how these games were played and how the decisions were made. Okay? All right. Hopefully that was fun. I will see you guys all in a future class. Happy holidays. Enjoy.